Hello my beautiful friends, my name is Alexandria and welcome to my channel. So today I am going to be talking about all of my most anticipated reads of January 2022. I was thinking about just compiling all of these books into one video for the entire year, but I got a little carried away and started adding way too many things to my list. And so um, now I'm just gonna try to do it monthly. I am putting this up a little bit later than I would have liked to. So some of these books are already released. I'll put the link to all of them down below so you can check them out if they sound interesting to you. But rambling aside, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it. All right, so the first book that I'm really excited to hopefully get to sometime in the near-ish future. It's called The Intangible, and this is by C.J. Washington. This is a debut novel, and I'm just reading the synopsis and stuff off my computer right here. It says, C.J. Washington's riveting debut novel dives into the raw emotions of a grieving mother whose quest to heal from a mysterious condition threatens to unravel the lives of those around her. Of course, being a parent, I love reading about other parents' experiences. Something that's really interesting about this book specifically, I really love reading about motherhood and different representations when it comes to motherhood. And this one is really interesting because our main character is becoming a mother. She is pregnant and unfortunately she ends up experiencing a loss, but something in her mind tells her that she is still pregnant. And that is something that I feel like isn't widely talked about. I read another book last year, I think it was The Push, and that was kind of about postpartum psychosis. I like reading books that have a lot more representation about topics pertaining to parenthood that we don't necessarily hear about as much. This is something that I have heard about before, but I definitely have not read it in a book before, so I'm very interested to in seeing how C.J. Washington goes about writing about this specific topic. So the next book that I have on my list is called You Don't Know Us Negroes and Other Essays. This is written by Zora Neale Hurston. This is an author that I've been wanting to read from for a while now. I have had Their Eyes Are Watching God on my TBR for I don't even know how long. I just haven't gotten around to reading it. This is a really highly regarded author. I've just heard amazing things about them. Spending more than 35 years of work, the first comprehensive collection of essays, criticism, and articles by the legendary author of the Harlem Renaissance, Zora Neale Hurston, showcasing the evolution of her distinctive style as an archivist and author. And quoted from the amazing Toni Morrison, who I also want to make sure that I am reading this year as well, they said that this is one of the greatest writers of our time. Yeah, so this is a collection of essays, which is going to be a little bit different for me personally because I don't normally read things like short story collections or essay collections or things like that, but I think this is going to be something that is really impactful for me. And so, again, stepping out of my comfort zone, trying new things, and I just know that it's going to be beneficial to me in the long run. So moving on to the next book that I am looking forward to reading. It is called Valorio. This is by Xavier Navarro Aquino. Set in the wake of Hurricane Maria, Xavier Navarro Aquino's unforgettable debut novel follows a remarkable group of survivors searching for hope on an island torn apart by both natural disaster and human violence. Valorio, meaning wake, is a story of strength, resilience, and hope, a tale of peril and possibility buoyed by the deeply held belief in people's ability to unite against those corrupted by power. If you can hear in the background, my child is currently playing in this room, so just try to, you know. <laughs> I really enjoy watching, reading, consuming anything involving cults. I'm not really sure why, what, what does that mean about me, but <laughs> I really enjoy learning about them and I haven't read if any, not that I can remember anyway. I don't think I've ever read a cult book, but it's gonna be really interesting. I feel like this is gonna be intriguing. All right, so this next book, I'm not even gonna to try to attempt to pronounce their name because I know that I will just butcher it. And so I'll put the name of the author on the screen with the book title as well. Um, but this is called Olga Dies Dreaming. I have seen this book on so many different TBRs. I've seen this on so many different recommendation lists um, when it comes to new releases and stuff. A Blazing Talent debuts with the Tale of Status 
ambitious, driven wedding planner grappling with her social ambitions, absent mother, and Puerto Rican roots, all in the wake of Hurricane Maria. I didn't plan for this one to come after the last book I read, but I guess they're all kind of in the wake of Hurricane Maria, so that'll be interesting um, to read about from different perspectives, from different authors. It says, set against the backdrop of New York City in the months surrounding the most devastating hurricane in Puerto Rico's history, Olga Dies Dreaming is a story that examines political corruption, familial strife, and the very notion of the American dream, all while asking what it really means to weather a storm. I really like reading books about the um, kind of perspective and topic of the American dream, specifically from the perspective of people who aren't from this country. Um, last year I read Behold the Dreamers. Is that what it's called? I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. And that was a really good book that uh, also talked about similar topics and kind of just got my mind to start thinking about it in a different way from that different perspective. And so I think this is gonna be another kind of representation of that. So the next book that I have is called The School for Good Mothers. This is by Jessamine Chan. Frida Liu is struggling. She doesn't have a career worthy of her Chinese immigrant parents' sacrifice. What's worth, worse is that she can't persuade her husband, Gust, to give up his wellness-obsessed younger mistress. Only with their angelic daughter, Harriet, does Frida finally feel like she's attained the perfection expected of her. Harriet may be all she has, but she's just enough, until Frida has a horrible day. The state has its eyes on mothers like Frida, ones who check their phones while their kids are on the playground, who let their children walk home, in other words, mothers who only have one lapse of judgment. Now a host of government officials will determine if Frida is a candidate for a big brother-like institution that measures the success or failure of a mother's devotion. Faced with the possibility of losing Harriet, Frida must prove that she can live up to the standards set for mothers, that she can learn to be good. This sounds fucking terrifying, honestly, as a person who has a daughter. It kind of gives me a little bit of vibes of like Handmaid's Tale, but I think this is going to be a really impactful read, I'm hoping. The next book that I have is Wahala by Nikki May, an incisive and exhilarating debut novel of female friendship growing three Anglo-Nigerian best friends and the lethally glamorous fourth woman who infiltrates their group, the most unforgettable girl since Carrie, Samantha, Charlotte, and Miranda. I heard about this book from Dee from the Heroines Corner. This is a debut from a black British author, if I remember correctly. Um, and I want to read more books from different places, not just from American authors. So I think that this is going to be something that's really interesting, probably make me do a lot of reflection on my own friendships or lack thereof. All right, so this next book is one that I have again been seeing around everywhere for I feel like a really long time, but I'm not sure if it was just in my imagination or if it just was like the release date was pushed back or what was going on there, but this is called Daughter of the Moon Goddess. This is by Su Lin Tan. The cover of this book is absolutely beautiful. Um, this is a captivating debut fantasy inspired by the legend of Chang Yi, the Chinese moon goddess in which a young woman's quest to free her mother pits her against the most powerful immortal in the realm. This is a YA duology. I'm really enjoying like YA duologies right now rather than like long series. So I really like hearing about different cultures mythology in the form of like YA books or any kind of fantasy books honestly. It gives me a lot of insight into things that I was not aware of to be perfectly honest and it makes me want to read even more about the subjects and it just gets me excited. Alright, so this next book is apparently for fans of Dennis Johnson and Ocean Vuong. I actually read Ocean Vuong's work for the first time last year. I read On Earth for Briefly Gorgeous. Love their writing um, and this is called All Day is a Long Time by David Sanchez. Um, it says, a captivating, searing, and ultimately redemptive debut novel about coming of age in Florida's drug-riddled Gulf Coast and the enigmatic connection between memory and self. All Day Long is a spectacular, raw account of growing up and managing against every expectation to carve out a place for hope. We see what it means and what it takes to come back from a place of little control, to map ourselves on the world around and beyond us. David Sanchez's debut resounds with real force and demonstrates the redemptive power of the written word. That sounds absolutely incredible. Deeply moving, deeply riveting. Just reading the synopsis is like, wow, 
I felt that. So this is gonna be something that I know is gonna be super powerful. The fact that it's compared to Ocean Vlog, I am hoping that it is written just as beautifully. <laughs> Um, and gives me that like literary magic that I experienced when reading their writing as well. All right, this next book is one that I'm super excited about because it is my first book of the month that I received. Um, I did not receive it, I paid for this, but <laughs> the reason why I decided to go out and get a book from Book of the Month, this is a book subscription service if you didn't know, um, I decided to go out and get this book because I am actually going to be co-hosting um, for the NB Book Clubs a uh, live show next month for this book, which is really exciting. This book is Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly. Um, and it says, there's nothing like a little competition to heat things up. Dahlia Woodson's culinary dreams are coming true. Sure, her marriage ended in a hideous explosion of misery and she's quit her job for the gamble of a lifetime, but she's finally a contestant on the cooking show of Chef's Special. Now all Dahlia has to do is not fall on her face more than once, make the best food of her life, and try not to get distracted by her hot, incredibly dishy competition. London Parker is fighting for more than just a cooking title. Not only did they just come out as non-binary on national television, but this is an opportunity for London to raise some support and a ton of cash for the queer community. No pressure. Getting distracted by a tiny and adorable tornado like Dahlia could be disastrous. Still, somewhere among the flying fish tacos, rampant egos, and culinary chaos is something that looks a lot like deliciously spicy chemistry. But can London and Dahlia's growing relationship take the heat, or are they about to get burned? <laughs> I'm so excited. Like, you don't even understand how excited I am to read this. It literally brought me to tears. I love cooking competitions. I love watching them. I love being able to see the behind the scenes. In book four, I'm just... If this doesn't like blow me away and like live up to my expectations, I will be really disappointed. But if you would like to hear my thoughts on this, I will be talking about it in that live show with Jesse. So the next one is called Yinka, Where Is Your Husband? Meet Yinka, a 30-something Oxford-educated British Nigerian woman with a well-paid job, good friends, and a mother whose constant refrain is Yinka, Where Is Your Husband? This is a love story that makes you smile but also makes you think and explores what it means to find your way between two cultures both of which are yours. That sounds really good too. I, I'm very excited about like the romance reads and stuff. I'm excited about all of these obviously, but I'm very much excited about like the romance books that I'm going to be reading because <laughs> romance just makes me really happy inside. And reading romance that has representation and different cultures and just like different things from what we have been reading in romance, I feel like for Yours now, it just brings me a lot of joy inside. The next book is an adult science fiction book by Toshi Onyobuchi, and this is called Goliath. The cover of this is wonderful. It says, in the 2050s, Earth has begun to empty. Those with the means and the privilege have departed in great cities of the United States for the more comfortable confines of space colonies. Those left behind salvage what they can from the collapsing infrastructure. As they eke out it, it, as they eke out in existence, their neighborhoods are being cannibalized. Brick by brick, their houses are sent to the colonies, what was once home, now a quaint reminder for the colonists of the world that they wrecked. A primal biblical epic flung into the future, Goliath weaves together disparate narratives. I'm so looking forward to reading this one, especially from like a biblical perspective. I read Nama last year. That wasn't science fiction, but reading biblical stories, uh, kind of like biblical threads throughout um, certain stories. It just, I don't know. It's really interesting to me because I did grow up in a Christian household and so I like seeing how that kind of ties into more modern stories and stuff like that, kind of their interpretations of that. And yeah, this one I feel like is going to be it's gonna be real good. I'm very much looking forward to reading this one. The next book is called Violetta. This is by Isabel Allende. This sweeping novel from the New York Times bestselling author of A Long Petal of the Sea tells the epic story of Violetta de Val, a woman whose life spans 100 years and bears witness to the greatest upheavals of the 20th century. Again, this is another historical fiction. This has some magical realism in it as well. I'm thinking 
that this may have some vibes of like, what's it called? The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, um, something like that. I have not read that book, but I like books that span over a long period of time, whether it's um, generations that we are going through and learning about, or if it is just like the entirety of someone's life. So this next one is called Real Easy by Marie Rutkowski. Um, and it says, a compulsive, tenacious, and unexpectedly hopeful thriller set in a Midwestern strip club told by New York Times bestselling author Marie Matkowski in the spirit of Gillian Flynn and Tana French. So I have read books by both Gillian Flynn and Tana French. I read um, In the Woods. I actually have it on my bookshelf. I read it a long time ago. I really enjoyed it. I haven't read anything else by the author. Um, but then I also did read, I think I read it last year, either last year or the day before. I read um, Gone Girl. Eh, it was okay. This storyline sounds so interesting. The fact that it's set like at a strip club just... If you know anything about me, it just brings me a lot of joy inside to hear about dancers and um, about that life. The next book is called The Chosen One and it is a first generation Ivy League odyssey by Echo Brown. Echo Brown testifies to the disappointments and triumphs of a black first generation college student in this fearless exploration of first year experience. The Chosen One is an unforgettable coming of age story that bravely unpacks a double edged college transition as both catalyst for old wounds and a fresh start. Reading certain genres from different perspectives that I have never read from before and specifically YA. I really enjoy reading YA novels from um, more diverse representation because it's not something that I got any of <laughs> growing up and so this definitely is like for my past self. So this last book, this may be the one that I am most excited about. This is by Sequoia Nagamatsu and this is called How High We Go in the Dark. Um, this says, beginning in 2030, a grieving archaeologist arrives in the Arctic Circle to continue the work of his recently deceased daughter at the Baragaika Crater, where researchers are studying long buried secrets now revealed in melting permafrost, including the perfectly preserved remains of a girl who appears to have died of an ancient virus. Science fiction, dystopian, kind of fantasy, adult, the cover is wonderful. Yeah. I am just really stoked about this one, even though it is about a virus. And <laughs> uh, I feel like there's very um, separate schools of thought and feelings about reading books about pandemics and viruses and stuff during this period of our lives. Um, and I have definitely shied away from it because I kind of tend to naturally shy away from it, I guess. All this being said, it sounds like something really interesting. It sounds like something that should not be happening but with the world we live in, it's definitely a possibility. I swear every day my co-parent shows me something that like, right. oh, they dug up this ancient thing and they don't know what it is, but they're going to try to play with it and see what happens. And I'm like, <laughs> do we not know how this goes? You, you've never watched movies, never watched TV shows, like never read a book because uh, it just sounds like a terrible, terrible idea and uh, bad things are bound to happen. Sequoia takes readers on a wildly original and compassionate journey spinning, spanning continents, centuries, and even celestial bodies to tell a story about the resiliency of the human spirit, our infinite capacity to dream, and the connective threads that tie us all together in the universe. That made me really happy inside. Oh my god, I'm so pregnant. Literally crying over a book synopsis. That is all the books that are going to be released in the month of January 2022 that I am looking forward to reading. Look out for them on future TBR videos if you'd like to see any specific blogs or anything um, focusing on any of these books. Let me know. If you have not subscribed yet, you definitely should do so. Join the family and I think that is pretty much it. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe and I hope you are finding joy in whatever way it is that you can. I love you. Bye. Bye. What is that? You look weird. What is this? What is your hand doing? It's showing your nails.